ดูนี่คือตีนังจางกอมัวมงนี่เม่มงเอยอมอเนจิสันดอจิสันจีเนลอเนวิยาลุนดูเนวัตรลอเอลุตีวัตรันเอเนสันทอเลเนโยลอจัดจอเชมูก็เชื่อนมาเนี่ยไอ้ยาห้องยิงมาฉีกันแล้วหายมาคุกุจิตาโตรงอะไรจะเต็มเนี่ยเขาที่เปิดตัวก็เชื่อนะแต่สิ Song poetry in the Hmong tradition is a is a is a method of carrying story. ชอบชวกี้ไอ้ดวงโจเลยลินแต่ดูชวกี้ตอบไปไอ้เทียลิโตจีเลยเนี่ยโยมก็เชื่อนมาก็เชื่อยาอ Is a, a sequencing of language. Patterns of word that can carry the yearning and the hopes of a people together. My name is Jombiya. I'm a refugee from the country of Laos. My name is Kao Kalia Yang, and I'm Bi Yang's daughter. 2016, I wrote the song poet, and the song poet, uh, song poet sitting right beside me, right here, is my father, a Hmong man, a factory worker from the Midwest, who will remind others of not loss, but of love. I was born with the love of language, a love of song poetry. From my earliest memories, you know, if there was a celebrated song poet or even anyone just singing at all, I would stand close to them, move closer, so I could hear those words. I was a child who knew loneliness early. My father died when I was just two. My song poetry was my way of expressing what was in my heart, what was weighing me down, and that the wind and the world carry it with me. February 17, Daddy. All in the thick of ya, 1984. Yeah. January 10, 1983. Daddy, that's your birthday. Yeah. Yeah, it's your birthday. Daddy, you're 23. When we were in the refugee camps of Thailand, I would sing. And I would sing so that the people who I knew had tears inside of their hearts, that those tears could come out. And so in that way, for me, my process has been very communal because it was the responses of my audience that prompted my songs to exit into the world and to live on and on. <laughs> In America, when we got here, I was unable to do what I was actually good at. The gifts that I've been born with couldn't translate. The refugee is inherently brokenhearted. Because how can you not, when you witness the, 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 the death of entire villages, your loved ones left behind? For the refugee to, 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 to survive in a country like this, finding food for the table, finding drink, all of these are issues of heartache, not just problems to be solved. Unless you've gone through war and unless you've left so much behind, it is an experience that is incredibly hard to translate into simple human understanding. When Galia wanted to write the story of my life, I said, don't write it. It's a, it's a life soaked with tears. It's too heavy for the pages. But more than anything, I think I wrote my father's story because people keep, you know, they, they kept on asking, where are your biggest literary influences? Where did you learn your love of language? And I used to talk about Robert Frost, and I used to talk about Louise Erdrich, who I thought was phenomenal, and who, who is phenomenal. And then there was that day when I realized, you know, my father's poetry. And then the truth is, I think my father is an incredible man, incredible song poet, in this tiny little language. 
and I understood the vast loneliness of that. To be a great song poet, to be trapped in a language that people are perpetually saying is dying, and he's so keenly aware. Isn't that the stuff of great literature? I do song poetry, and I do it in understanding that because I've raised my children in a different country, maybe they won't understand all the nuances within my songs or even the language. Part of what I burn to do is to preserve this song as a gift for future generations. If they don't like it, that's okay, but if one of them should come searching, that it is there to be found.